Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James and I will continue to be your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. I hope you're having a wonderful day or good morning or good evening or even good night. And thank you very much for joining me once again in this LAMP Bible Study. I hope that we continue to uh, seek God's wisdom through His Holy Word. And today we will be finishing up Deuteronomy. And so we'll be starting in chapter 31 of Deuteronomy. We're still again with Moses. Moses is handing off the leadership role to Joshua and he is providing all the information and all the details and everything that they've went through since Egypt. And of course, as we know, Joshua went through a lot of the, the um, things that the whole tribe of Israel went through, um, through the Exodus and of Egypt and then wandering around and then the promised land so and joshua was one of the uh, chosen ones to originally go into the promised land and do an investigation and he brought he was one of two that brought back a good report but unfortunately they didn't the tribe didn't listen to him because the other uh, 10 decided not to provide a good report so here we are again, Deuteronomy. Now the more mature generation has, is, has died off and the younger generation is now um, going to fulfill the promise that the Lord is going to provide. I'm currently in a NIV collegiate Bible and I will be going over different versions of the Bible as we go along. Um, but currently I'm going to stick to the NIV and then once I finish the NIV version after reading all the books of the Bible, then I'll be going, moving on to one of the other versions, King James, New King James, um, New International Standard. I'm not quite sure which one just yet, but thanks for joining me al uh, along. So, uh, and, and by now I already know that the flashlights have started and I'm going to try going to really try my darnest to get those to be daily. <sighs> I have several that I have videoed. It's just taking the time to do any type of editing and loading. You know, I know they're very short, so it should be easy, right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> well, let's get started. And I think my allergies are just a tad bit better today, but I'm still having to clear my throat. So please bear along with me. I will try not to clear my throat in the mic. <laughs> and as again, we're in the Old Testament. So sometimes I'll come across some names or some words, uh, wording for names of places that will be a little bit difficult for myself. And so if you do know how to pronounce those, um, do please do so as we read along or um, leave comments. Oh, you know, co comments are there for everybody. So provide a comment. And if these are, uh, LAMP Bible studies are very helpful to you. So be it. Thank you. Thank the Lord, you know, for these LAMP Bible studies. Um, I'm just here to spread the word, just to be here as, as needed, as needed. So, and I'm very happy. I'm every Tuesdays and Thursdays when I record these. I'm I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait to do this because it took me a long time. Unfortunately, it took me a long time to get to this point. Even though when I was young, I was already there. But you know, when some people we go through a walk and. We don't necessarily lose our way, but we lose that fire. You know, we lose the, we either become cold or we stay on fire, or sometimes we become lukewarm. And the Lord talks about that in the Bible. And so we'll go over that. We'll go over that and more wisdom, more wisdom that's throughout the Bible. So let's, let's begin. Let's get right into it. Joshua to succeed Moses. Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now a hundred and twenty years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. 
And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to uh, you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that, that's, that's, that's not only wonderful, but it's comforting. It gives you that comfort that, again, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, th this is Moses telling Joshua in, the, in Israel that the Lord is going with them. The Lord is going to fight their battles. The Lord is going to give them success. And they don't need to be afraid. They don't need to be afraid because everything's going to be provided for them. Provisions, shelter, and defeat of their enemies. All is going to be provided to them. And we can look at it for ourselves as well. We, are, we can look at this. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Because that is the covenant when we have with Jesus. When we trust and believe in him that he died for our sins. And that because that's an eternal. That's an eternal. So once you do believe in Jesus, the goal is to not sin. Is to follow after Jesus. But unfortunately we are man. And we do sin. And we ask the Lord for forgiveness. And that forgiveness, because we accept, accepted Jesus Christ, is eternal. That doesn't give us, give us an excuse or a right to sin. Because we are not wanting to do any of those things. Could you think about it? Think about how Jesus everything that Jesus went through as a man and had to die for us all already and knowing that everything that he did and everything that he went through was to remove that sin uh, for ourselves past present and future so we strive not to sin and not to live um, live a sinful life we want to glorify God and we want to be that light. We want to show through our living what it's like, what it's like to love the Lord. And with that, other people will see that. And other people will see that and be blessed by that. Also in here, uh, Moses says, I am now a, a hundred and twenty years old. So... Moses went through a lot. His life, you know, it started off, which some people would believe is super easy, with a silver spoon. You know, he was in royalty. But did he start that way? No. His life was in danger the moment he was born. The moment he was born, but the Lord, but the Lord God had a plan. And that plan has already went through. The Lord protected him. The Lord not only protected him, protected his life, but put him in a position, put him where that original threat came from. And he prospered and he grew and he learned in Egypt within the royal family. So it tells us a lot. The Lord can use anybody, even people who are don't believe it tells us that he's our protector and he has all he already has the victory we just have to understand that and accept that so there's a lot there again deuteronomy is super meaty <laughs> there's a lot to it as i've said in previous bible studies and so um what thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we go through these uh, verses when we go through the scripture how does it make you feel and what does it make you think
Let's continue to read. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their forefathers to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Once again, the Lord is repeating himself. The Lord is repeating himself through Moses because we as humans, we need that repetition just for just to accept that comfort, just to accept that the Lord goes before us and that he will be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. In this case, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Now, in recent times, I've, bes even beside myself, I've known a lot of people, um, close people that I know who have lost people. And at times during that loss, it can be difficult, especially if it's a close family member, somebody you relied on, somebody you had that relationship with, that person that understood you. And sometimes when that passing happens, we forget. <laughs> that there's, excuse me, <laughs> that there's more <laughs> because it's not just that person that loves us but it's that same love <laughs> that's even better than the love that we have here on earth. It's the love from God. Now, remember I said, <laughs> sometimes we'll laugh and sometimes we'll cry. And so I don't know where this emotion came from, but just, the, just knowing that people, what people go through, but, and, and feeling that hurt, but knowing that the love hasn't left, the love hasn't left you. The love hasn't left me, hasn't left you. The love is there. And it's always been there. And we can acknowledge it. And we can accept it. And we can take it and give it a hug. We can give the Lord a hug. And thank him. So, think about those things. Again, you know, reading the word, it, it reflects life. It reflects ourselves. It brings us that wisdom to understand each other, to know what each other is going through. When somebody is in mourning, it says you can mourn with them. It's okay to mourn with them. It's okay to cry with them. And it's, it takes time. It can take time for someone to heal, for someone to go through their grieving process. But it's one day at a time. And eventually, like a really good song I know, there'll be one last tear. <laughs> and um, you will start healing. You will be healed. And understand that the love has not left you. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to mind for you? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The reading of the law. So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the priests the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them, at the end of every seven years, in the year for canceling debts, during the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the law, I'm sorry, at the place he will choose, you shall read this law before them in their hearing. 
assemble the people, men, women, and children, and the aliens living in your towns, so they can listen and learn to fear the Lord your God and follow carefully all the words of this law. Their children who do not know this law must hear it and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So again, reading it, reading it over and over again, um, it helps you to memor or to understand it, to meditate on it, meditate on the word. Let's continue to read. Israel's rebellion predicted. <laughs> okay. The Lord said to Moses, now the day of your death is near. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tent of meeting where I will commission him. So Moses and Joshua came and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. Then the Lord appeared at the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the cloud stood over the entrance to the tent. And the Lord said to Moses, You're going to rest with your fathers, and these people will soon prostitute themselves to the foreign gods of the land they are entering. They will forsake me and break the covenant I made with them. On that day I will become angry with them and forsake them. I will hide my face from them, and they will be destroyed. Many disasters and difficulties will come upon them, and on that day they will ask, Have not these disasters come upon us because our God is not with us? And I will certainly hide my face on that day because of all their wickedness in turning to other gods. So again, right here, the Lord already knows. The Lord already knows that unfortunately man is going to not be able to live under under the law under these commitments and these commands they're going to turn they're going to in fact do all the detestable things that all the nations around them were doing and he's telling he's telling them he's telling that eventually he will become angry and he will stop blessing Israel now with that and when we continue to read and we'll see more of he tells, you know, he does say about the punishment. And he also always leaves a door open for hope. And, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that part as well. Because there's always hope. And uh, that's another thing that we have to think about. Though we may sin, though we may do things, we have hope in the Lord. And we know that our sin has been forgiven. But we also have to say that, we have to rec we want to recognize that as well. And um, just brings up a lot of things to my mind, you know, going about the day. Sometimes I even get to a point where it's hard to distinguish when you are wanting to help people, but they're not wanting to help themselves. And then also when you do help somebody, could you have helped that other person that didn't want to help themselves as well? And so a lot of that's hard to take in and, lot, and hard to think about and hard to consider. And so those answers lie right here, right here in this text in, in the Bible. And so we continue to read, we continue to try to understand where those thoughts, feelings, where those situations come in and come from. And there's examples throughout the Bible of different things that happen in our lives. Um, the, nothing's new under the sun, <laughs> you know, when it comes to the Bible. And people think, they think that, um, Sometimes people think that uh, the text is so holy that it doesn't describe all the sins of the world. And I'm like, I'm one, I'm one of those like, but have you read it? <laughs> you know, and ha if you have read it, have you asked for guidance and wisdom? Because you do understand that throughout the Bible, it describes pretty every sin. It describes it all. And so, um, but... But with that, because we know that uh, sin equals death, we know that, or we're learning it, 
or we will learn it. Um, but with that, we also know that there's hope because God's God sent his son and he already won the battle for us. Remember, the, the Lord, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He's already done his portion. He's already done it. He's already, victory's already, <laughs> it's already done. It's already done. The battles are over. So think about that. You know, think about it in our lives. How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Now write down for yourselves this song and teach it to the Israelites and have them sing it so that it may be a witness for me against them. When I have brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, the land I promised on oath to their forefathers, and when they eat their fill and thrive, they will turn to other gods and worship them, rejecting me and breaking my covenant. And when many disasters and difficulties come upon them, this song will testify against them because it will not be forgotten by their descendants. I know what they are disposed to do even before I bring them into the land I promised them on oath. So Moses wrote down this song that day and taught it to the Israelites. So he already knows. <laughs> he already knows your sin. He already knows my sin. He already knows. So, um, but he likes to hear um, when we recognize it. He likes to hear us ask for forgiveness. And then he also likes us to humble ourselves. He likes us to humble and praise pay, praise him because he is, he is worthy of praise. We're here because of him. So, and we're gonna, and, and, and all of that, um, We'll get to in Genesis. We'll get to real soon <laughs> because we're finishing Deuteronomy and we're not going on to Joshua just yet. We're going to go back to Genesis and we'll learn. We'll learn that. Um, that he's the reason why we're here in the first place. So um, let's continue. The Lord gave this command to Joshua, son of Nun. Be strong and courageous for you will bring the Israelites into the land I promised them on oath and myself will be with you. After Moses finished writing in a book the words of this law from beginning to, to end, uh, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. There it will remain as a witness against you, for I know how rebellious and stiff-necked you are. If you have been rebellious against the Lord while I am still alive and with you, how much more will you rebel after I die? Assemble before me all the elders of your tribes and all your officials so that I can speak these words in their hearing and call heaven and earth to testify against them. For I know that after my death you are sure to become utterly corrupt and to turn from the way I have commanded you. In days to come, disaster will fall upon you because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord and provoke him to anger by what your hands have made. Again, so remember, they've, um, the previous Bible study, they went to Mount Ebal, I believe, Ebal, yeah, Ebal, um, and proclaimed the curses. And even though that they know the curses and they know what it will, what will happen if they don't um, follow these commands and um, continue to worship the Lord, but choose to do other things like the other nations around them, including worshiping false, false gods, um, that they're going to rebel. He already knows that they're going to rebel and suffer consequences for it. So it's unfortunate, but there's always a hope. And we'll continue to read on and uh, read further and learn more. The so uh, oh, uh, again, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Uh, let's continue to read. 
the song of Moses. And Moses recited the words of this song from beginning to end in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel. Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will, re I will proclaim the name of the Lord. O oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. They have acted corruptly toward him. To their shame, they are no longer his children, but a warped and crooked generation. Is this the way you repay the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father, your creator, who made you and formed you? Remember the days of old, consider the generations long past. Ask your father and he will tell you, your elders, and they will explain to you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided all mankind, he set up boundaries for the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob his allotted inheritance. In a desert land he found him, in a barren and howling waste. He shielded him and, carried, and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them on its pinions. The Lord alone led him. No foreign god was with him. He made him ride on the heights of the land and fed him with the fruit of the fields. He nourished him with honey from the rock and with oil from the flinty crag, with curds and milk from herd and flock, and with flat, fattened lambs and goats, with choice rams of Bashan and the finest kernels of wheat. You drank the foaming blood of the grape. Uh, Jeshurun grew fat and kicked, filled with food, and he became heavy and sleek. He abandoned the God who made him and rejected the rock his savior. They made him jealous with their foreign gods and angered him with their detestable idols. They sacrificed to demons which are not God, gods that had not known that gods they had not known, gods that recently appeared, gods your fathers did not fear. You deserted the rock who fathered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. The Lord saw this and rejected them because he was angered by his sons and daughters. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what their end will be. For they are a perverse generation, children who are unfaithful. They made me jealous by what is no God and angered me with their worthless idols. I will make them envious by those who are not a people. I will make them angry by a nation that has no understanding. For a fire has been kindled by my wrath, one that burns to the realm of death below. It will devour the earth in its harvest and set afire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap calamities upon them and send my arrows against them. I will send wasting famine against them, consuming pestilence and deadly plague. I will send against them the fangs of wild beasts, the venom of vipers that glide in the dust. In the street the sword will make them childless, in their homes terror will reign, young men and young women will perish, infants and great-haired men. I said I would scatter them and blot out their memory from mankind, but I dreaded the taunt of the enemy, test, or lest the adversary misunderstood. Uh, misunderstand, lest, lest the adversary misunderstand and say, Our hand has triumphed, the Lord has not done all this. They are a nation without sense. There is no discernment in them. If only they were wise and would understand this and discern what their end will be. How could one man chase a thousand or two put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? For their rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies concede. Their vine comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are filled with poison and their clusters with bitterness. Their wine is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. Have I not kept this in reserve and sealed it in my vaults? It is mine to avenge. I will repay. In due time, their foot will slip. 
their day of disaster is near and their doom rushes upon them. The Lord will judge his people and have compassion on his servants. When he sees their strength is gone and no one is left slave or free, he will say, Now where are their God now where are their gods? The rock they took refuge in, the gods who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up to help you. Let them give you shelter. See now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. I put to death and bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal, and no one can deliver out of my hand. I lift my hand to heaven and declare, as surely as I live forever, when I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand grasp it in judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood while my sword devours flesh, the blood of the slain and the captives, the heads of the enemy leaders. Rejoice, O nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will take vengeance on his enemies and make atonement for his land and people. That's a long song. <laughs> that was a long song. So, um... It went over a lot. It said, you know, here the Lord is. He's getting getting ready to provide Israel all that they ever wanted, all that they needed. And he knew that they were going to forsake him. They were going to forget about him. And so, like I've said in previous Bible studies, we can take a look at this in our own lives. And when times are good, do you even forget to pray before a meal? Do you bring the Lord up and even a thought when your birthday happens and you get a present, when Christmas happens, when something awesome happens or a success happens, when you get to go on vacation, when you get a, an award, do you immediately think, wow, I did all of that. I had all those accomplishments. I did really, really well. Where's the Lord in it? You know, I think of myself. Have there been instances or times in my past where that has happened? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, absolutely. I am not sinless, okay? There was only one man that was sinless, and that was Jesus. Uh, but... To be able to know and understand that and recognize that and reflect upon it and want to do better so that the next time that someone says, oh, good job, or you did, I say, thank you, but it was the Lord that helped me. You know, it was the Lord that gave me the thought or the Lord that provided for me a new deck. You know, I needed a deck really bad. It was falling apart, <laughs> you know, and I've was able to finally get a new deck. And it happened, the, you know, it was like, wow, this is a nice deck, you did a really good job. And I said, oh, thank you. The Lord provided for me to be able to do this. I thank the Lord for it. And you know what that person said? They said, amen. They said, amen. Because whether it was a test, whether it was a need for humbleness and thankfulness. You know, even those times of happiness, we got to stop and think to ourselves, are we forgetting the Lord? You know, it, because there's a lot of people out there that were like, do you have to think, you're going to the restroom, do you have to think about the Lord then? You know, it, <laughs> it, it it's hard to talk or tell someone just what they need to have a relationship with the Lord. You know, that might be something that they need to pray about and think about. You know, if they're feeling like they're giving too much time to the Lord, which according to wisdom, there's not enough. To, we can never repay it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the battle's won. 
uh, we just all we have all we do is believe that Jesus is our Savior. We get we we get into heaven by believing uh, Jesus is our Savior in, with salvation and faith. And there's not enough time in our life to thank Him. He's already did it for us. He's already won the victory. He's already won the battle. He already won the supreme victory for us. And so we have our lifetime and eternity to thank Him. That's what you could say to someone. You know, say even to yourself. Um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind while uh, when we read over this scripture? It even brought up um, Sodom and Gomorrah again. So when people think that the Bible doesn't talk about all the sin, when we get to Genesis and go back, we will read about Sodom and Gomorrah. There will be a portion in there. And we'll get to understand that there's not sin on the, on the face of the planet that has not been mentioned in the Bible. Anything that we can think of. And sin is unfortunate. Um, but we have victory. And that victory, that victory <laughs> that we, it's already there. It's already there for us. We just grasp it with our belief and faith in Jesus. The hard part's already done, <laughs> you know? The hard part's already done. Think about that too in our lives. When, it, um, you know, we go through hardships, you know, difficulties, you know, saving up to do things or, or what have you. And we're like, man, that took a lot. Well, it took a lot to redeem, a, redeem us of our sin 100% past, present, and future. And that has already been accomplished. So, again, going over these passages, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Moses came with Joshua, son of Nun, and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people. When Moses finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all these words I have solemnly declared to you this day, so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of this law. They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. By them you will live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. It says a lot. Moses to die on Mount Nebo. On that same day, the Lord told Moses, Go up into the Abram range to Mount Nebo in Moab, across from Jericho and view Canaan, the land I am giving the Israelites as their own possession, there on the mountain that you have climbed, you will die and be gathered to your people, just as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his people. This is because both of you broke faith with me in the presence of the Israelites at the waters of Meribah, Kadesh, in the desert of Zin, and because you did not uphold my holiness among the Israelites. Therefore, you will see the land only from a distance. You will not enter the land I'm giving to the people of Israel. A lot of things there. <clears throat> uh, Moses, even Moses had a time of weakness and anger, and it wasn't justified. The Lord told him to speak to a rock. It, it had happened. This was now maybe the second. This It had happened before, basically. Um, but it at that time, he did what the Lord commanded, and this time the Lord told him to speak to a rock and water will come out, and instead of speaking to the rock, he hit, he struck the rock. And water still came out of the rock, but 
it was like disrespecting somebody that was giving you a command. You know, think about it in your family. Think about it in your life. Think about it in your job. Someone that you respect and then you turn around and disrespect in front of them. Because remember, the Lord was with them the whole time. And the Lord, it's the Lord is God. So he's always, always. He's always there. He's always here. He's always, he's here now. Moses disrespected the Lord. So his punishment was he could not go into the promised land. However, because... He continued to be faithful and do things that the Lord had requested him to do. The Lord allowed him to see the promised land, to go up on a mountain and see and view Canaan, uh, which was the promised land. And he reminded him, he reminded him the reason why he couldn't cross the Jordan and go into the promised land. But he said, you'll be, you know, um, you will die and be gathered to your people, just as your brother Aaron died. And um, we do know that Moses uh, was one of those that, you know, even the Lord himself would say, you know, Moses was very, very good. He was a very good uh follower of my commandments and teachings so even with people that we think oh you know that person that person you know they're they're a preacher they're such and such or um, they make mistakes too you know um, I always tell people because people always get, and I know I've said this in a previous Bible study, that sin is like there's levels of sin. Like, okay, you could lie, and that's a sin. And then if you kill somebody, that's a completely different level of sin. That is incorrect. All sin, even a thought of lust, where there was no action, but there was a thought there, um, all of that is sin. It's all the same. The Lord can't be with sin at all. Zero. El Zilcho. So that means it's all one sin. It's all under the same. But we as men, we have to judge things. We have to, uh, we've created a society where we have different levels of punishment. And so, um, it, it, it's it's one of those things to really think about when it comes to understanding that even a leader, even someone uh, that is, you would think that is someone who is, you know, a preacher or somebody who's leading a flock and such, um, they occasionally can fall into sin or uh, be sinful. It's unfortunate. They try not to be, you know, of course not. Um, once you start walking in the way, you try to do everything you can to avoid sin. And by reading, by staying in the word, by meditating on the Lord's word, by having conversations with the Lord, prayer, worship time, it's, it's you know, uh, having a relationship with the Lord helps prevent helps prevent the sin from occurring. Helps prevent those thoughts. Helps prevent those feelings. Helps prevent those actions, whatever those may be. And so, but there's hope in the Lord, and the Lord can recognize that and still reward us. In this case, He gave Moses an award, and His award was He was allowed to see the Promised Land. He couldn't go, but He could see it. He could see the new wine and the, the new land filled with milk and honey that um, the Israel was gaining. And we already went over, you know, whether Israel, Israel as a nation deserved it. 
they didn't deserve it. The Lord was fulfilling his promise though, because the Lord loves us that much. <laughs> you know? So like earlier, when I talk up, when I got a little bit emotional and talked about death and a death of a loved one, we have to understand that there's that person fantastic it's great and we are to mourn we are to have take time and to heal however love unimaginable is still with us and so we're here to accomplish so that person's time is over and so now what are you what what are we to do we're to continue to do what the lord has brought us here to do and I'm sure that person was here to do what the Lord had brought them to do. And unfortunately for man, for us, we have life and then we have death. And we'll get to Genesis as to why. Genesis is gonna give us a lot, a lot of that information, that missing pieces, those missing pieces as to life and death and why why it became to be and also throughout the bible it gives us more information as to what we do in order to prevent the second death prevent eternal death i'm going to give you the answer it's jesus <laughs> it's jesus it's real easy it's it's jesus but it may not be easy for some people. So we're going to continue to read and continue to learn and continue to grow throughout as much time as needed. Land Bible stays not going nowhere. <laughs> I will go over this Bible over and over and over and over and over again until I feel the Lord says, okay. <laughs> Which I don't see happening, but you know, hey, I'm not God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, so, because that's a lot of weight. Okay. Thoughts, feelings. <laughs> How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? Um, there's only four chapters, so that's why I'm kind of slowly going through this. But I do need to uh, speed it up just a tad, tad bit because we're only on 33. Um, let's continue to read. Moses blesses the tribes. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came, came with uh, myriads of holy ones from the south, from his mountain slopes. Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand. At your feet they all bow down, and from you receive instruction. The law that Moses gave us, the possession of the assembly of Jacob, he was king over Jeshurun. When the leaders of the people assembled, along with the tribes of Israel, let Reuben live and not die, nor his men be few. And this he said about Judah. Hear, O Lord, the cry of Judah. Bring him to his people. With his own hands he defends his cause. Oh, be his help against his foes. About Levi, he said, Your Thummim and Urim belong to the man you favored. You tested him at Massa. You contended with him at the waters of Meribah. He said of his father and mother, I have no regard for them. He did not recognize his brothers or acknowledge his own children, but he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. He teaches you your precepts to Jacob and your law to Israel. He offers incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. Bless all his skills, O Lord, and he pleased with the work of his hands. Smite the loins of those who rise up against him. Strike his foes um, till they rise no more. About Benjamin, he said, let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him. For he shields him all day long, and the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. About Joseph, he said, May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above, and with the deep waters that lie below. With the best the sun brings forth, and the finest the moon can yield. 
with the choicest gifts of the ancient mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth in its fullness, and the favor of him who dwell in the burning bush. Let all these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. In majesty he is like a firstborn bull, his horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them he will gore the nations, even those at the ends of the earth. Such are the ten thousands of Ephraim, such are the thousands of Vanessa. About Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and you, Issachar, in your tents. They will summon peoples to the mountain, and there offer sacrifices of righteousness. They will test, or I'm sorry, they will feast on the abundance of the seas, on the treasures hidden in the sand. About Gad, he said, Blessed is he uh, who enlarges Gad's domain. Gad lives there like a lion, tearing at arm or head. He chose the best land for himself. The leader's portion was kept for him. When the heads of the people assembled, he carried out the Lord's righteous will and his judgments concerning Israel. About Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's cub springing out of Basham. About Nephtali, he said, Nephtali is abounding with the favor of the Lord and is full of his blessing. He will inherit southward to the lake. About Ashar, he said, most blessed of sons is Ashar. Let him be favored by his brothers and let him bathe his feet in oil. The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze and your strength will equal your days. There is no one like the God of Jershurun who rides on the heavens to help you and on the clouds in his majesty. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemy before you saying, destroy him. So Israel will live in safety alone. Jacob's spring is secure in a land of grain and new wine, where the heavens drop dew. Blessed are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. He is your shield and helper, and your glorious sword. Your enemies will cower before you, and you will trample down their high places. So a lot, you know, Moses just gave them um, blessings for each of the tribes. Um, including um, the tribe of Judah, which is interesting because he says, oh, Hear, O Lord, the cry of Judah, bring him to his people. With his own hands, he defends his cause. O oh, be his help against his foes. And we do know that the tribe of Judah, that's where the, the lion, where Jesus comes uh, from the tribe of Judah eventually. So, um, any thoughts or feelings that come to your mind when we read these uh, through this section, through these verses? I'm having a little bit of allergy, <laughs> so I'm trying, trying my darndest. But um, any thoughts or feelings that come to your mind? How does it make you feel, and what does it make you think? So a lot there with the blessings, and let's go ahead and uh, finish Deuteronomy up with Deuteronomy 34, the death of Moses. Then Moses, oh, let's continue to read <laughs> the death of Moses. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Galilee to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev, and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab. As the Lord had said, he buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Beth Peor, but to this day no one knows where his grave is. Something to point out. I'm doing this. <laughs> Something to point out. <laughs> um, I'm going to read this part again, because if you, uh, just in case you didn't... I know, we, just, we know it again. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Beth Peor, but the, to this day no one knows where his grave is. 
Moses, remember, Moses went up by himself to the top, top of the mountain. It says he buried him. Any thoughts? <laughs> he buried him. Who? Moses didn't bury himself. And it also says to this day, to this day, no one knows where this his grave is. So Moses died and the Lord, God buried him. And no one knows what the grave is. Let's continue to read. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. A couple more things. Moses was 120 years old when he died, and his eyesight was fine, and his, his strength was fine. Everything was fine. He just died. Think about our lives. How many people may even make it to 100? You know, and then getting into 100, how many people make it beyond 110? It starts getting difficult, right? <laughs> And the fact that everything was fine with him, he was fine technically. He was tech he was fine. Not just even the word technically didn't even be there. He could see, um, he could see fine, normal, and the strength that never left him. He just died. It was time for him to go. So he just died. And then again, with that death. People die, and the Israelites grieved for Moses. They grieved for him 30 days. Now, this is another thing I know in life, especially in careers and such, does your job give you 30 days? Do people really get that long? So it can be difficult. So take your time. I'm not saying take the 30 days. What I'm saying is it's going to take time. It's going to take time. And... You are to grieve, and it's okay to grieve. Now, it also talks about grieving too. So, it's okay to grieve, and it's okay to mourn. But some people, how do I say this? Because we're going to learn about this. And it's okay to wail and mourn. But some people take it to another level. Um, it's okay for others to grieve with you or with someone. Um, what I mean, take it to another level is they start being destructive. You know what I, and those of you who know what I'm saying, know what I'm, understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> they start trying to bring other people down. So grieving is part of a normal, you shouldn't feel down. You should want to be, you're going to be upset, of course. Um, you may want to celebrate that person's life. It shouldn't be a time of negativity or you feeling like you're there's nothing left for you. <clears throat> and you shouldn't want to hurt other people because of that. And you shouldn't want people to come down to your hurt level. So you have to be care we have to be careful when it comes to that because it does talk about uh, mourning people, but it doesn't talk about or allow or say that it's okay to make scenes to be destructive. Um, and it, it, we'll, we'll read on about that, you know. So take the time, though. Take the time to heal. In that time of healing, pray. Have a conversation with the Lord. Not just pray have a, your relationship now is your time if you haven't been having your relationship with the lord if you've been putting that person in front if you've been negligent with your relationship or walk with the lord now's the time to lean on him the most you can grasp him as hard as you can because he's there he's always there and he loves us so much that he goes up he went above and beyond he will do it for you so there's, you know, there's a lot of emotion when it comes to talking about death, when it comes to talking about 
um, life and death um, and different parts of the Bible, it brings out emotion. That's okay. That is okay. It just shows that you're human. Jesus wept. Need I remind everybody? <laughs> it's okay. It's going to be okay. And it's okay to mourn. See, they, um, the tribe of Israel mourned in Moab for 30 days. And then, once they were done, they knew what they had to do, which was head towards the promised land. How does that make you feel, and what does that make you think? Let's continue to read. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those miraculous signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. And so let's do a quick review. I know we're out of time. Um, finishing up Deuteronomy, Joshua to succeed Moses. We knew that Joshua was getting handed over the reins. He was one of the uh, 12 people that went into uh, the promised land 40 years before and brought out a good report. However, Israel at the time, the people of the age did not believe him, did not trust him. And so the unfortunately, Joshua ha was prevented from going into the promised land for 40 years, but he was also handed leadership. Says a lot. When you have that faith, when you have that faith and you have that follow through, it says a lot. Lord's going to reward you. The reading of the law, reading of the law. This is back in Moses' time during the law, during the commandments. And something that we have a, a way to learn is by reading things over and over again. And that's what they did. Israel's rebellion predicted. <laughs> Just like us, the Lord already knows. The Lord already knows we're gonna we're gonna sin tomorrow or the next day or whatever. The Lord already knows that Israel was gonna sin. He told them what their punishment was gonna be. We know from the Holy Word and learning and understanding it and reading and continuing to gain wisdom and such, um, what our options are. Which is we can live with our sin, or we can believe um, the Lord sent his Savior, Jesus, his son, and that removes our sin. And we continue to understand, we'll continue to seek wisdom and, and understand that through the, the Holy Word. The Song of Moses. We went over all of the calamities and things that would happen um, to the people if they didn't if they didn't follow through um, and so it, it, it's a lot it's a lot um, but it also provided hope because there's wisdom right there he's telling them Say it. Say it over and over again to understand that this is what will happen if you don't follow the commandments. Moses blesses the tribes. He blessed, or I'm sorry, Moses to die on Mount Nebo. He was getting ready to go. He ordered for Joshua to come. And he was told that, um, Moses was told he was going to go on top of the mountain so he could see the promised land. Moses then blesses the tribes before he goes. All the tribes. He gives them a wonderful, each one a wonderful blessing. Tells them about, I mean, just Zebulon. Rejoice, Zebulon, and you're going out. And you, Issachar, for your tents. They will summon peoples to the mountain and there offer sacrifices of righteousness. You know, I mean, he just goes on, each one of them, each one of the tribes. He goes on to bless them. Asher, uh, let him be favored by his brothers and let him bathe his feet in oil. 
you know, all these things and things were good things, very, very good things, blessings to all the tribes of Israel. The death of Moses, then he passes. He goes up to Mount Moab, or the mountain in Moab, and buried, and it says he buried him. <laughs> the Lord buried him, and no one knows where that burial site is. No one knows. And then Joshua became, comes the leader, and was filled with the Spirit. He was filled with the Spirit of wisdom. And that's what it takes. And that's what it takes. And so thank you so much once again for joining me in another Lamb Bible study. And we'll continue to seek God's wisdom through His Holy Word. We'll continue to read and understand and try to grow as well. And our next book is going to be Genesis. Um, and then after Genesis, we'll head on to Joshua. And so what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind from, from the whole book of Deuteronomy, from the whole reading the whole book and understanding more so about the time that during that time, the time of the law, why the law has happened, why it was needed during that time, what was understood from it, what was taken from it. Um, the Lord already knowing that people couldn't 100% um, follow it. Um, does it bring any thoughts or feelings to your mind? Are there any verses or things that stuck out in your mind that spoke to you, that reminded you of different times of your life? Um, and does it, do you understand the repetitions, especially the repetitions over and over again, including even the Lord will not forsake you or leave you, you know, just different repetitions throughout rereading all the, about the festivals and the Passover and such, why it was needed, why it was repeated, the importance of it. Deuteronomy is a very meaty book. It's got a lot of information in it. It's almost like a review. It's because this is the end of Moses' lifetime. He's trying to make sure, he wants to make sure he's getting, putting that last bit back in so people can understand his love for the Lord. And do we have that? Do you have that? Do I have that? Do I have that love for the Lord? Do we have that love for the Lord? Um, is that, is there enough, you know, are we taking enough time? Are we taking enough time to thank the Lord, to humble ourselves and thank the Lord or have a relationship with the Lord? And do we understand why that it's needed? Why a relationship with the Lord is needed? Do we understand about life and death and how even though death may happen, we know that God is God. He is will be God today, tomorrow, and forever. And He is love. And He will love us always. So it's a lot to think about. And a lot to have feelings for. So, with that being said, I want to thank you for joining me on another LAMP Bible study. Um, again, flat, uh, if you want short videos or really short videos, those are flashlights. Uh, just one verse, just one. <laughs> Maybe more, I'm not quite sure. I don't know how uh, those are going to go yet because um, those are new. Uh, but uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, LAMP Bible study right here um, on YouTube. On YouTube, if you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, and such, leave them in the comments box. Um, I will continue to be your lamp Bible study reader. I want to thank you for joining me. I want you to have a blessed morning, a blessed afternoon, a blessed day, a blessed evening, a blessed night. God bless. And one more thing before I go, again. Uh, please continue to pray for me and I will continue to pray for you. Thank you so much. Uh, again, 
we'll be right back here starting with Genesis, the book of Genesis, on our next Lamp Bible study. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you there. Have a good night. Actually, have a wonderful morning, wonderful day, wonderful afternoon, wonderful evening, and a wonderful night.